Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video, we're going to learn how to create this text. To do that, we're going to use a text spline, a bevel modifier. We'll add a simple light setup and some materials. So let's get started. First of all, we'll go to the main toolbar, select Customize, and we're going to scroll down to Unit Setup and check Generic Units. Then we'll go up to Rendering, Rendering Setup, we're going to scroll down under the common panel to assign renderer. Here in production, we're going to assign the mental ray renderer. Press OK, then close the dialog. Now let's go over to the create panel, shapes, text, and here we're going to delete the word max text and type in home. Then we're going to select the Arial black normal font. We'll just leave the rest of the default settings. Click in the center of the top viewport to drop the text. Then press Alt W to maximize it. We're going to go to the top panel and select the Move tool. Just bring all these dials back to zero. That's the center object. Now we'll go over to the Modify panel. We're going to scroll down and select an Edit Spline modifier. We'll select the Vertex mode. And we're just going to move a few vertices around. Just move them around as you like. Now we're going to select all the vertices and give them a nice smooth edge. So if we'll hold the control key down. We'll select all the vertices except for the letter O. Now we're just going to scroll down to the fillet tool and click on one of the vertices and drag the fillet tool up slightly. Turn the fillet tool off and the edit spline. Let's drop down in the stack back to text. A warning sign will pop up. Just click on Hold Yes, then OK. We'll go to Interpolation, and now we're going to drag the steps up a little bit, something like 10. This will just give us a smoother result. Let's go back to the top of the stack, and now we're going to scroll down and select the bevel, a bevel modifier. Press Alt W to go back to all four viewports, just so we can see what we're doing here now. Now here in the bevel values, level 1, the height, we're going to set it to 0.5. The outline will give it an outline of 1. Level 2, type in something like 20. There's no outline. In level 3, we'll give it a height of 0 0.5 and an outline of a negative 1. Let's go to the perspective viewport and then press Alt W to maximize it. There we are. We can see we have a nice bevel. Press Alt W again. Let's go over to the left viewport, we'll just zoom in a little. Right click on the object and select convert to an editable poly. Then we'll select the polygon mode. We're going to drag the cursor right through the center. So we just select the center polygons. Now we're going to come over to the edit polygon panel and select the inset, the small inset uh, box for inset. And now we're just going to type in um, 1.5 and then press OK. Just press OK twice. I think we might do another inset so we'll click again on the small settings box and this time we're going to type in 0 0.5 and then OK. Now let's, let's add an extrude. So we'll click on the small settings box for extrude. Now here in the caddy we're going to select first of all local normal and then underneath, in the amount, we're going to type in 1.5. Then press OK. Now with the polygon still selected, hold the control key down on the keyboard. Then we'll come over here to the selection panel and select edge mode. This will convert our polygons to edges. Now with the cursor, we're just going to hold the Alt key down and drag the cursor through the center of these edges. This is going to deselect all the inner edges. Hold the control key down again and then press anywhere in the perspective viewport. This is so we don't lose our edges. Now Alt W to maximize. Now we can just zoom in a little. Now we're going to go over to the Edit Edge panel. We'll scroll down and we're going to select the chamfer tool. Click on the small settings box. In each chamfer amounts, we'll just leave this one. 
and then the Connect Edge Segments type in 3, then press OK. We're going to add a Material ID to different sections of the object. So we'll go back to the left viewport, we'll select the Polygon Mode. Now this has automatically brought back our last polygons. So we'll go up to the panel and press Grow. Now this has selected the next row in of polygons. Now we can just scroll down. Scroll down to Polygon Material IDs. Set ID, we'll set it to number 1. Press Ctrl I on the keyboard, this will invert our polygons. And now this section we can set as 2. Click on Edible Poly to turn it off and press M on the keyboard or we'll select the Material Editor. Now we're going to drag out our multi-sub object material, double click to open it and type in the word Home. Let's go down to Set Numbers and here in Number of Materials we'll just type in 2 then OK. Now we're going to add first of all a mental ray material so we'll drag out an Arch and Design material, we'll double click to open it and now we're going to drag out the node and connect it to the multi-sub object number one. We'll go over to the templates and we're just going to scroll down and select a copper. We'll just use all the default settings. Now let's drag out a standard material, double click to open it and we'll connect it to the number two on this multi-sub object material. Go over to the diffuse color slot and select a black color then press OK. Now in the specular level type in 70 and in glossiness we'll type in 40. We can go to the top menu and press lay at all. That way we'll have a better view. There we are. Let's drag our material now over to the object. There we are. We can see that's been applied correctly. Maximize perspective viewport. Now we're going to separate the letters. So we'll just go over to the editable poly and select element mode. Select the letter H and we're going to scroll down under edit element and select detach. Here in the dialog just type in the name letter H. Control C to copy it and then OK to close the dialog. Now we're going to select the letter O, detach and we're going to paste in what we copied before and change the name to letter O then OK. We'll do the same again for M. We don't need to detach E, we just need to select it and change the name at the top. Just type in letter E and then we'll close the editable poly. Before we can actually move anything we'll have to change the pivot point. So we'll select all the objects, we'll go to the hierarchy panel, affect pivot only then we're going to go to Alignment and click on Centre to Object. Now each letter has its own pivot point set to the centre. Before we move on, let's go back over and turn off the Effect Pivot Only. Now we can press out W to go to all four viewports. We'll go to the top viewport. Now we're going to use the Rotate and the Move tool just to move the letters around. We can turn that one, we can move this one back slightly. There, that's the idea, just to move them around and rotate them a little. OK, let's go now to the top viewport. We're just going to zoom out. And now we're going to go over to the Create panel, Geometry, and select the plane. Then we're going to drag out the plane here in the top viewport. And then we'll go to the Modify panel and in Length we'll type in 1200 and in Width we'll also type in 1200. Length segments will bring them down to 2 and Width segments will bring it down to 1. Let's go back to all four viewports. Now we can right click on the plane and convert it to an editable poly. We'll go over and we'll select the Vertex mode. And now here in the left viewport let's select these end vertices and drag them up. Just a bit higher. We'll also drag the middle vertices and drag them behind the text. Now we're going to go over and select the edge mode 
and click on the edge in the top viewport. It's going to be the middle edge. Now we're just going to scroll down to the chamfer tool and here in edge chamfer amount we're going to type in something like 90 and in segments let's bring it up to 16. That's given us a nice curved edge, very good. Let's go back over now and click on editable body to turn it off. Now I'm going to go to the front viewport, I'm going to maximize it and I'm just going to make sure the letters are the same height and make sure the plane is right underneath the letters. Just drag that down slightly. There we are. Now I'll go back to all four viewports and I'm going to change the name. I'm just going to type in something like ground. That's all right. Let's open the material editor. We'll drag out a normal standard material. Double click to open it and we're going to change the name to ground. Then we'll go over to the diffuse color slot and we're going to pick, um, let's bring the dial down like an off-white. That's fine. And let's drag the material over to the plane. Close the dialog. Now we'll go back into the perspective viewport. Then we're going to go to the create panel and we're going to create a camera in the viewport. So we'll scroll down to create camera from view. There we are. Now we can see that our perspective view is now a camera view. And we have a camera in the scene. Let's just drag the move tool along. Try to get the same position as you can see in this video. Now click on the word camera, right click and scroll down and click on show save frames. Then we're going to go up to rendering, rendering setup. And here we're going to go to output size and behind custom, go down to HDTV. For this video, I'm just going to type in a width of 640 and a height of 360. It's just to save on rendering time. There we are. I'm just going to move it. There we are. I think I like that position. That's fine. I'm just going to rotate this H slightly. Let's create a light setup now. So we'll go over to the Create panel, Lights, and here behind Photometric, we'll go to Standard, and then we're going to select a Mental Ray Area Spotlight. We'll go to the top viewport and we'll just drag out the spotlight. Right click to turn off the light creator. Then with the move tool we can just move the light around. And I'm going to drag it up. Just going to move it back. And then I'm going to drag it over to the left hand side of the camera. There we are. I think that's the right position I'm looking for. Let's go over to the Modify panel. We'll change the name. We're going to type in Key Light. And then I'm just going to go over to the panel. I'm going to turn on the shadows. I'll make sure shadows is turned on. Ray Traced Shadows. The multiplier, I'm just going to leave it at 1. I'm just going to scroll down. We're going to go to Spotlight Parameters. Now we'll just go past that. Make sure it's on Circle and Spotlight Parameters. And here on the Hotspot, I'm just going to drag this up to something like 64. And the Fall Off a bit higher, maybe something like 80. And I'm going to go to the Advanced Effects, make sure I've got Diffuse and Specular turned on. And now we're going to go down here to the Area Light Parameters and type. We're going to change rectangle to disk. And here in samples in the U I'm just going to type in 15 and for the V I'll also type in 15 and type in 100 for radius. This is going to give us soft shadows. If you like harder shadows just bring your samples and your radius down or if you like them softer just boost them up a little bit more. Now we're going to create another light but this time a mental ray area omni. We'll click here in the top viewport to drop it. I'm going to right click to come out of the light mode and now we can just drag it up down here in the left viewport. We'll go back over to the modify panel. We'll change the name. We're going to type in fill light. We're going to go down to shadows and we're going to turn off our shadows. We don't need shadows. The multiplier, we're going to bring this down to something like 0 0.3. 
Then we'll scroll down a bit further. And here in Advanced Effect, we're going to turn off Specular. There we are. Now I'm going to create a copy. So I'm just going to click on, this, on the Omni, hold the Shift key down and drag the copy out. And then in the Clone Options, I'm going to type in the name. I'm going to say Backlight. And then click OK to close the dialog. Let's position this right behind the text. Just going to drag it down. So it's behind the text, but quite far down and at the back there. That looks all right right there. We're going to boost the intensity of this opening light. So we'll go over to the Modify panel. Make sure we're in the backlight. And then we're going to scroll up into Multiplier. We're going to change it to 0 0.5. As you can see now in the background, it's a bit bright. So we'll go over to the panel and here in Shadows, click on the Exclude button, click on Ground and the small arrow. And then now you can see it is in the other panel. We've just excluded that from the light. I think I'll lighten the background a bit more so I'll open the Material Editor, click on the Ground Color and then from the Diffuse Color slot, I'll just bring the dial down a bit more. Let's go to Render Setup on the main toolbar. Now here in the dialog, we're going to scroll right down to the bottom to Views and make sure it's in Camera View, then we're going to lock it. Let's press Render. Even though we have chosen a small output size, it's going to take time to render. So I'm going to turn off this video while it's rendering. OK, now that turned out well. I re-rendered it, but this time I turned the final gathering up. I set it to Medium. You can do that too if you like. Okay, let's have a look at our image. We have some nice curved edges. We've got a nice text and bevel on here and some nice soft shadows in the background. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy.